Hello there, Geminis. Welcome to your weekly tarot reading. So I'm going to switch things up a little bit, and I'm going to talk to you about um, your spiritual advice first, these um, bottom five cards, mainly because I feel like there are some issues that you have to work through. And from there, we'll go into your love reading, because this is going to kind of, um, uh, it, it's, it's, related to this so once we clear this energy out of the way the love reading will make a lot more sense okay um, I've done this for Virgos before mainly because I felt like there was a need for it and I think it might be helpful for you guys as you navigate the energies of this week because I feel like it's it's a little intense so in terms of your spiritual advice um, I feel like the main message for you is to kind of um, stay in the present moment, count your blessings, and really look at what you do have in front of you. So rather than scanning the horizon for new opportunities, for escapism, for things that you wish, you know, could be there, could, um, could come in for things that you long for, rather than doing that, scanning the horizon and never being completely 100% content, count your blessings live in the moment and you know take stock of what you have especially the people that are around you especially the people that are working towards building something with you and the people that are you know reliable and have always been um, consistent in their effort and consistent in you know their ability to be there for you when you need them and the reason why I say that is I feel like this is the energy of somebody looking for like an outsider looking in okay looking in at a situation possibly uh, wanting what you have wanting your position wanting uh, the the love and the guidance and the blessings so somebody is looking in on you possibly like you know checking on you um, I I'm seeing like um, checking on social media and things like that okay somebody that's like constantly monitoring what you're doing, how you appear, what you talk about. And I feel like there's a deep sense of this person being quite controlling, wanting to dominate the situation and wanting to tell you, you should do this, you should do that. And so they're, 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 they have this laser beam focus on first your household, your work sector, your ability to lead others as well. So I feel like there's kind of... Um, honing in, trying to figure out what you, you're doing, possibly wanting your position, wanting your work, wanting all the blessings that you have. I don't see a, an energy of somebody sabotaging you. I don't sense that. But I feel like somebody really wants what you have. And so if it's a job, do the best to your capabilities. You know, don't leave room for somebody to sneak in from under you and, and steal things from right under you. If it's a relationship as well, nurture your marriage, nurture your family, nurture your relationship and embody this energy of the emperor trying to do the right thing, trying to follow that, uh, that voice of reason, that voice of rationality and taking a stance. Okay, so being very firm in what you believe in. So if it's a work situation, if somebody is doing something that you don't like, you can't be passive aggressive. You need to really speak up. So I feel like there is um, some passive aggressiveness. And I feel like, you know, if somebody does something that we don't like, we need to, to hold them accountable for the way that they treat us, for the way that they behave. Rather than just saying, oh, you know, I'm going to avoid that person, right? Like the problem doesn't go away if you avoid it. And then if you kind of seethe in anger over something that they did, but you never address it with them, then you can't really be angry at them for the things that they do because they're not really aware of the impact of these actions on you. So it's, it's up to you to really, you know, defend your territory, stand your ground, and not have to, you know, cower because of conflict or cower away from conflict because you're conflict avoidant. So I feel like this is a good week for you to be very firm with how you are expressing yourself 
and be less mutable, be a little bit more forthright in your expectations for other people. If you are in a leadership um, position, um, a lot of people look up to you. We have here the Three of Pentacles, wanting to build things with you, coming to you to consult you, and uh, coming to you for your guidance and your clarity and your expertise. And a lot of you guys, you're very, very good as troubleshooters. You think really fast on your feet, you know a lot of things about a lot of things and you know how to make problems go away for other people because you're you have a knack for problem solving and you actually enjoy it so i feel like a lot of people will be coming to you for opportunities for consultation for advice for clarity and i see um younger people as well and i also see like older so i see like um not a, a you know like a wide spectrum when it comes to age but i feel like uh, people who are very very young and then people who are a lot older than you and the ones that are older than you honestly they're pushing your buttons because i feel like for many of you in positions of power you might be very very young and they're looking at you kind of skeptically they they feel as if you haven't really earned your stripes you haven't have have the years of experience under your belt but nonetheless you're very good at what you do and so they come to you kind of like with um with a challenging stance and they're coming to you um in a very antagonistic way so these are like the older folks and I feel a lot of it has to do with their own, you know, insecurities, their own issues that they're projecting on you. But more than anything, stand your ground. Talk to them as if, you know, age doesn't really matter. Talk to them with that voice of authority and really, really stand up for what you believe in. So never mind the age gap. Just be very clear when you communicate and be very firm when it comes to what you expect from other people, okay? So age does not matter. It should not matter when you're trying to lead others. So I feel like in the home environment, it's the same type of energy where some people feel like they're older than you. They, they have uh, more knowledge, more wisdom, more insights, and that's not always the case, okay? Um, our worldview is determined by our life experiences. And so I already see like clashes when it comes to generational gaps, you know, how do we raise the kids? How, what religion should we, um, teach them? You know, like, um, how do we get a situation, um, sorted out when there are too many people involved? So for example, if it's a marriage, and the in-laws are involved and everyone is putting in their two cents when the marriage is between you and the partner and the children. So I feel like there are a lot of people meddling in your affairs because they're overstepping their boundaries. I mean, they mean well, but they're overstepping their boundaries and they're giving you advice that's not really appropriate for you. So this is a good uh, week overall for you to seek advice from a person who is in a position of authority so for example um if you have you know if you need financial advice consult a financial advisor don't talk to you know your cousin uh joe who's had like three bankruptcies right and then if you need marital relationship advice consult um, a therapist, see a marriage counselor, don't talk to your mom and dad who might have a very tenuous relationship with one another. So learning to um, ask for help from the right people and then learning as well to really stand your ground and figure out what you need and, and, and demand it of other people. So it's not a great week for you to compromise. It's a great week for you to assert your authority and assert you know, your be a little bit more fixed, be a little bit more, I, I want to say, and no offense to anyone watching this, be less of a Gemini, less of a Libra, and be a little bit more fixed like an Aquarius. Because I feel like, you know, there are things that you you cannot compromise on. And, it, and if the things are values related, it is really, really important for you to stand your ground, okay? So that's going to allow me to segue into the love relationship sector. 
because I feel like there's conflict coming into the picture. So the first thing I have here is the Three of Swords. The Three of Swords is a situation where a lot of words have been said. A lot of things have been out in the open that we can't really take back. A lot of, um, it, it's like too many things have happened, too much has been said, where do we go from here? But I feel like this process of unearthing these things that are problematic, that we have swept under the rug or that we have ignored or, you know, that we've never addressed with the other person, these things are meant to come out. These things are meant to come out into the open so that we can deal with them because, you know, the more we love somebody, the more they're going to push our buttons, right? And the more time we spend with someone, the more good times and bad times start to build up. And so I feel like if things are not addressed, this is the week where they implode. This is the week where we talk about, I did all of this. What did you do? And then the other person was like, well, I did all of that too. What did you do? So it's like keeping scores of uh, that, that internal uh, side of you where, it, you know, as the twins, I feel like, you want your partner to be like you. You want your partner to intuitively understand you. And you feel like, if it's my soulmate, if it's somebody I'm meant to be with, they should understand me without me talking. Well, it doesn't really make sense. No one can intuitively and empathically sense what you need. And even then, you know, they're probably going to be picking things up like 75% of the time rather than every single time. So it's really important for you to talk and communicate and not let things build up to this point, okay? And this is a really great battle, I feel like, between a relationship partner. And the reason I say that is we have here the Queen of Swords and the King of Swords. So air energy, a lot of communication, not a lot of feelings, not a lot of, a lot of emotions. And so no one is really speaking from the heart. They're speaking from a space of calculation, keeping tabs, keeping scores. I did this, you did that. So it's, it's a very um, cold, detached, and almost antagonistic type of a vibe that I'm getting here. Um, you might be dealing with another air sign, so an Aquarius, a Gemini, or a Libra. And this is the Gemini card. She, is, um, she has like two faces to her. So I feel like this might be the partner that you're dealing with. You have somebody that is really good with animals. You have someone who is, um, I, I'm getting like an Ivy League uh, type of uh, education. So somebody that might have multiple degrees. They're very, very intelligent. They're very worldly. They're less, I want to say like, um, they're not like materialistic so you know money doesn't really mean a lot to them they care about higher ideals higher values they might also be like um, a, a, a social entrepreneur a philanthropist they want to fight a good fight they want people to be well fed and happy so you've got somebody who is like it's an air sign but i feel like more they're a little bit more idealistic Okay, so whereas for you, your sword is planted firmly on the ground, you're resting on it. So I feel like this denotes that, you know, you care about security. You care about having a good job, staying at a good job, building up your reputation, um, building up, you know, getting uh, significant pay increases every year. So you care about these security things. But these security things are not really innately important for a typical Gemini. And over time, these things that you build up, because it's secure, because you believe, that's what you're meant to do. I feel like it's keeping you stuck and it's not really allowing you to live out your dream. It's not allowing you to be flexible and, and, and mobile and, you know, really living a life that is authentically you rather than security based. And so you're coming across another person who is like a little bit more, it's like th this is a twin energy. This is a really significant relationship where somebody is showing you a different side of themselves. So you can tell, you know, just the vibe, this person's a lot more relaxed and this person is very, very tense. 
this person, you know, they dress well, but it doesn't mean that they care about the material things. I feel like they're a world traveler. They collect objects and clothing and, you know, habits and languages from all different parts of the world. And I feel like, you know, they have this sense of exoticism about them and you're naturally very drawn to them. You might be a little bit envious of their idealism. You might be envious of the way the carefree, quote unquote, carefree life that they lead. And they don't seem like they're plagued with worries. They don't seem like they're torn and conflicted. And they don't seem like they have a lot of drama or a lot of problems in their lives because they're just, you know, carefree and free spirited and um, mobile. And so there are ideological clashes between you and this person when it comes to, you know, um, stability, relationships. There is mutual fascination here that I'm sensing, but you two value very, very different things. And this, this is somebody that I feel, um, if you are this person, you might have a lot of earth in you. If you are this person, you might have a lot of water in you or fire where, you know, you're, you're philanthropic and you're um, kind of like a free spirit. And I feel like, you know, it's, um, it's a situation where there might have been arguments, but there is a reconciliation, okay? So for those in relationship, you know, significant relationship or marriages, if there has been issues, there is an apology coming into the picture here with the Knight of Cups, which is like an offering, a peace offering, a peaceful gesture, a gesture to kind of like, let's just, you know, not beat a dead horse, let's just um, overcome our ideological differences and let's just agree to disagree. It doesn't mean that we passive aggressively sweep things under the rug. It just means that we value each other enough to respect each other's differences and move away from it. Okay, so I feel like you're operating from a space where um, a lot of a lot of score, like evening out the score, a lot of keeping score, keeping tabs, a lot of things that might have been swept under the rug are imploding for this week, but they need it to happen to come out into the open so that an apology can take place, so that you can harmonize and 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 come together with another person and you know address all of your issues but in a way where you know you're it's allowing you to be um less conflict avoidant okay because conflict is not always bad it can be bad if we ignore it it can be bad if we become defensive and it can be really bad if the other person is just emotionally irrational but this is the week where you are dealing with a partner a love interest that is very 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 rational so if they're in the reverse they might be you know very manipulative uh they might be like um very deceitful but in the upright position they're willing to talk things out they don't shy away from conflict they know that everyone has their flaws so you know let's talk things out let's figure out the solution so this is somebody who is a fixer they are solutions oriented and i feel like there is going to be a major major victory here with the six of wands overcoming your troubles being able to sail on from conflict and heartache and you know harsh words and, and things like that because you're in a league with somebody that is very much like you except you know they're not conflict avoidant they kind of charge right in and they're like okay what's the matter let's talk about this so they're gonna sit down and you're gonna need to talk and you're going to need to face your fears and you're going to realize in the process of facing your fears that your fears are unfounded that not every situation where there is a disagreement it it's not going to lead to a fight it's not going to lead to a space where you are acting you know defensively or the other person will be evasive there is clear and total understanding and communication that's happening for this week to really help you understand another person and to help you as well 
learn to address issues and not be passive aggressive and not be con uh, conflict avoidant and you know you're going to confront a situation head on and the situation uh, involves another person that is very much like you in that they want harmony they want balance but you know they understand that harmony and balance needs to happen or can only happen when we arrive at a truce okay so you have some beautiful things coming into the picture um, if there are issues conflict fights and things like that I feel like a lot of it has to do with responsibilities in the household who's doing what who's taking care of what and um, you know that that whole process about keeping score so you might be dealing with a Libra you might have Libra in your chart where you're very very sensitive to imbalances in the relationship and um, I asked you know what is one of the major conflict that's coming into the picture and I have here the Queen of Wands and this is like the fairy godmother so you might have issues when it comes to taking care of in-laws or in-laws meddling in the parenting of the children you might also I'm sensing this, but not so much. You might have somebody that's uh, interfering in your relationship. Hence, you know, somebody is like on the outside looking in. Okay, so just be very careful about that. All right. So I hope the reading is helpful for you, Gemini. Um, face your fears. Face your fears. You know, the, the shadow side of you is the uh, Sagittarius and Sagittarius. They just charge in and solve problems. So calling upon that side of you. I feel might be helpful for this uh, this week okay so I wish you all the best I'll be back next week take care